Hey burbs, what's up? My name is Victoria Ryan. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Yoshikins. My yellow-sided green cheek Kanye. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about a awesome, awesome experience that I had. I left the country. Not for good. I just went to Canada. Home of syrup and poutine. And I got to experience this amazing place. It was called Bird Kingdom. Home of like hundreds of tropical birds. Really cool to see a lot of these. You know what? No, no, I can't do this. Are you coming for my job? <laughs> hey, burbs. So, here was the deal. I'm going to be making a video about my experience with Bird Kingdom, which is the world's largest indoor aviary, free flying, whatnot, in Canada, literally right across from Niagara Falls. I was basically going to tell you about my experience, the different types of birds I saw. Basically, a really positive view on my experience. During the course of that video, which was literally like two minutes in, I realized, well crap, between all the excitement of seeing all these birds, I didn't put two and two together and be like, um, what if this isn't a good place? I didn't know much about behind the scenes of this place. I was just in Canada. My husband found this place and we're like, oh my gosh, we have to go there. And I didn't put two and two together. I didn't research it to see if it was one of those zoos, you know, one of the zoos that don't treat animals well they just lock them up in this room and is there for our enjoyment and that kind of bugged me. I'm seriously making a video supporting these people. So that's when I stopped and realized I need to look into this more. So this video is not going to be what I thought it was going to be. Um, it's basically kind of exposing the place. That being said, um, let's research this zoo together and Let's see what we'll find out. First of all, I want to see what people are saying about Bird Kingdom. So, all right, so here we go. Bird Kingdom, 2,213 Google reviews. Okay, so let's see what some people are saying about this place. My girlfriend was actually able to get a discount on price as she knows someone who works there. Okay, well, I don't. Okay, so let's find some of the negative stuff. Let's get down to the T. No, no, I totally get it, and that's the tea, sis. I am quite convinced they had a dead eel in their fish tank. Let's find some people that were against it. There's a lot of good reviews. Let's see. One of the top five attractions in Niagara Falls. Blah, blah, blah. My girlfriend loves it there. Blah, blah, blah. The museum area could use some updating. I don't know, I kind of like the old feel of it. I mean, a museum is a museum. I'm still squawking over how stunning this place is. <laughs> okay. Oh, one star, three star. Let's see these. Katie says, if you're a true animal lover, you will avoid this rundown, cruel prison for birds? Mistakenly <laughs> thought I might enjoy seeing birds in their natural habitat. To see these wonderful tropical birds in concrete wired cages with half-dead plants covered in bird poo left me sad and angry. Notice many of the birds are huddled in corners, hiding in boxes, or worse, sitting on window ledges looking at the outside. These beautiful animals have wings. They aren't meant to be in cages so that tourists can get a picture taken with them. It's shocking to me this is still seen as okay. Like I say, if you truly love animals, you will not visit and allow your money to continue t this type of cruelty. This is the type of reviews that I was actually looking for. A couple people said that the birds look sad or whatever. Um, a couple people said they don't like all the bird poo. I mean, like, do you have birds at home, honey? Because there's a lot of poo everywhere. So let's go on their website here because the main thing that I wanna know and write down here. So the things that I want to know is the bird's diet. Another thing too was the lorikeet. So I'm curious like 
what happens with the lure keys when it's not feeding time? And do they get to fly out with the other birds? I assume that they wouldn't because like, how else are they going to get them? I don't know. So that's a question for me is lure keys cages. Like, are they stuck in that wired cage all the time? Another thing is like, where the burb do they get these guys? Like, where do these burbs come from? a couple of concerns that people were having in their reviews was the bird poop like who cleans it okay I have two birds and I understand there is a lot of bird poop at all times and there's like 300 400 different birds of different sizes heck yeah there's going to be poop kind of want to know too like how often do they bring in new birds and are they quarantined before they come in there like yeah let's put that as a question so now let's go on the website and see if Anything on here answers a question. Oh, so we got a phone and an email. I may end up just, let's do that. I'm going to send an email and call someone and hopefully talk to two different people and see if they give me the same response. <laughs> it doesn't say anything about the birds as far as like how they're taken care of. Unless I'm missing something. E, uh, no. Information on our conservation efforts is coming soon. Why you always lying? Oh, oh, oh. Wait a minute. Look at this stuff at the bottom. And it is accredited zoos and aquariums. Re as a registered charity, supports and enhances the conservation role of its members through a variety of public engagement and information initiatives and partnering with like minded. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, so that's good. But then in simplest terms, Kaz's work consists of one thing, answering the question, why zoos matter. Boom, this is what I needed. Okay, zoos and aquariums, blah, blah, blah. Kaz's logo displayed alongside a zoo or aquarium's name signifies excellence in animal care and management and a commitment to conservation and education. That's good. There's not like, well, there's none. If there's no information on the Bird Kingdom website about like how they take care of these animals. Obviously, you know, we can gripe and complain in the review section, but we don't know the behind the scenes. And that's what I want to get down to, like what happens behind the scenes. But they do have that Kaza Azak Canada's accredited zoos and aquariums logo at the bottom, which obviously means some... So I want to talk to someone by email and I also want to talk to someone through the phone. So hopefully we get two different people that hopefully don't contradict one another. Ooh, I'm just curious, like what happens if they both say two different things? Ugh, this could be bad. But then it's like, should I use my YouTube email because what if I don't know I mean I I highly doubt they know who I am and I highly doubt they would look me up I mean I would think that they would get questions like that on a regular basis I mean it's about animals what did I get myself into I don't want to seem shady because here's the thing like I wouldn't want someone to do that to me and maybe it wouldn't be a big deal to them maybe like nothing shady is going on to where they wouldn't give me two different answers. This was just supposed to be a video about my time there, not going super deep in this. I mean, th the fact that they have that logo at the bottom, that should mean something, right? I mean, but then again, would it be bad just to totally write them off and be like, oh no, they're good because they have that logo? They have a YouTube. Let's check out their YouTube. They haven't op uploaded in like, it seems to be a year. So basically this is just like their tourism thing. It's not actually like how they take care of their animals or anything, which I feel like they should. I don't know why they don't have more videos up. <sighs> okay, well, let's go ahead and send them an email and give them a call. Okay, so today is day, I think, three since sending the email to Bird Kingdom. Um, 
I'm pretty sure they sent me an email this morning. It was like, I think at five or six in the morning. And when I checked my phone, I quickly swiped all the emails off and then it didn't hit me till afterwards. I was like, I'm pretty sure I just got an email from them. So I didn't read it. Um, we're gonna log in on my computer here and read it together. Hopefully it's good news. I don't know what I'm going to do if it's not. Um, this is kind of an awkward situation I just put myself in, so love that. Well, Puppleton is here with me. Yoshikins is flying around doing Yoshikins things. So we'll just go ahead and log in. What are you doing, Puppleton? So we did indeed get an email from them. I'm a little nervous about it, not gonna lie, because what if it's not the answer that I wanna hear? This isn't really, you know, something that I look forward to putting publicly. You know, I don't want to publicly shame a certain group. But I mean, if, if they're in the wrong, they're in the wrong. And I feel like there's a professional way of going about it. what you're doing to animals is not right. I mean, I, I'm sure they're not like beating birds with a stick, but it still makes me uncomfortable if they are what other people describe like zoos and stuff because zoos get a really bad name. I'm not really a fan of zoos. And it's very, very sad because not all of them are bad. Same as rescues and aquariums, this and that. A lot of them give animals a really good life in captivity compared to what it would have been in the wild. So there are some zoos that are definitely built for conservation and they give the animals the proper space and time that they need. Many zoos have awesome educational programs. Okay, and these programs are, are geared heavily towards children. Again, the youth, that's the most important thing to take interest, that's our future. Hello, Victoria. Thank you for your inquiry. Bird Kingdom is proud to be a CAZA accredited facility. CAZA does have their ethics and standards available on their website as well as the accreditation requirements. CAZA is encouraging zoological facilities to have transparency with the government and the visitors to the zoo every day. I have adding I think she meant I am adding. I have adding some responses below in your original email. Awesome. Okay. So, for the birds diet question, she responded and said, we have many species of birds, reptiles, and mammals. The diets for these animals are reviewed yearly more often. The nutrition is, of course, important, but also the way in which the food is offered. In parentheses, she put natural to their way of eating in the wild. And sometimes a schedule or weekly change is offered to our animals to ensure they are eating a variety of foods. The cost of supplies and labor involved to prepare the diets is considered. Number two, the lorikeets. This exhibit is designed specifically for these birds and is, and is their permanent home. Mm. Okay. The exhibit is designed so the birds are in control, meaning they can choose to interact with the guests or not. That's good. They offered food six times a day, both fresh fruit and vegetables, as well as the specially formulated nectar, which is good. Guests may offer the nectar to the birds, however, the nectar is also offered to the them, I think she meant man, them, to them in a dish, and the birds are not required to interact with people if they wish not to. War keep by nature can be very destructive to plants, okay. And because of this and their specific diet requirements, they would not fare well flying with other birds in the aviary. If the lorikeets were offered the food, the birds in the aviary eat it would be harmful to them. Oh, that's interesting. I mean, that's a good answer, I believe, but I don't know. I just kind of have an issue myself with the lorikeets being trapped in this wired cage. and. I don't know, maybe, we'll, we'll look into that. We'll look into that. Where do these birds come from? Ooh, this one I wanna know. Bird Kingdom receives between four and 10 inquiries per week from private pet owners to take in their animals. We are a smaller facility and cannot accommodate this amount of animals. We will occasionally take animals from the pet trade if we can properly care for the animal and not compromise the care of the animals we currently have. Bird Kingdom participates with the SSP Species survival programs organized by AZA to help ensure the animals in captivity are not overpopulated and genetically diverse. We work with zoos in Canada and the USA hey, to ensure the captive bred animals have the proper care and will trade animals 
if it is in the animal's best interest. CAZA has standards in regards to animal acquisitions slash depositions and housing the single species. Bird Kingdom Animal Care staff are responsible for all of the animals, including cleaning the aviaries. The time spent cleaning offers the staff an opportunity to observe the animals. The large aviary cleaning schedule is complicated. The top portion is sprayed with a hose and water, including plants, railing, and walkroom, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. The bottom portion is sprayed on the opposite days. Oh. The days when the area is not sprayed down, it is scrubbed by hand using a variant scheduled of disinfectants. This is a minimum and various other factors are involved in cleaning the aviary such as maintaining the soil, plants, maintenance of the waterfalls, living wall and ponds, and power washing. The list is almost endless. Cleanliness is important for the health and safety of animal staff and the visitors. Which I totally get them with this because in some of the reviews that I saw people were complaining about the poop but I wonder if those people have birds because it is kind of a shock in a way if you don't have birds and you go to an aviary like that which is very huge and you see a bunch of poop your automatic response as a human is like why doesn't anyone clean that up because we're so used to dogs and cats where it's like, okay, we go to the park, a dog takes a poo, you clean it up instantly right then and there. It's difficult when birds poop like every freaking 10 minutes. I mean, if they really do stick to that schedule, that's a lot of freaking cleaning. Holy bird. How often do you bring in new birds to the aviary? Bird Kingdom has a quarantine facility on site, ooh, where any new acquisitions will be housed for a minimum of 30 days. During this time, a variety of tests will be done to ensure the health of the animals. Our veterinarian will do a physical on each animal and determine if any treatment is required based on test results. The animals will not be released from the quarantine area until the veterinarian has given approval. That was really good playing devil's advocate with all this because you know we got to think of both sides of the story. I am sure I am not the only one that's asked these questions and they've been in business for a while so I would think that there would be some crazy bird mom such as myself that would go and ask them these questions. But here's what I'm thinking with this. Okay, not to be rude, but like I'm a total grammar Nazi, right? So I'm looking through this and automatically seeing some like spelling grammar issues. Like she was quickly responding, not calling her dog by any means, no. Basic human error. And I feel like she was actually sitting down and responding to me. It's not a copy and paste kind of deal. You know what I mean? If it was like literally extremely perfect, I'd be kind of like, this is a little too perfect. As you guys saw, there's some human errors there. So that tells me that she doesn't have this copy and paste system, which is great. And now I'm kind of debating if I should call someone else to get another point of view. I don't know if that's really necessary because I personally have a good vibe about this. Like I feel good about her answer. The fact that they quarantine their birds for at least 30 days the fact that they have such an intensive cleaning schedule. The only thing that I'm kind of like, Ugh, about, and if I have to nitpick and be kind of, you know, crazy bird mom about these people, is the whole lorikeet situation. It makes total sense that, you know, lorikeets are destructive and they'll destroy like the plants and stuff that are there, but I still can't help but to feel bad that they're in that wire cage. But here's the thing, they get fed I mean, on a schedule, they get plenty of food from the sounds of it, and they're not forced to interact with people. It just kind of, the only thing that upsets me about the situation is that they're in this wired cage all the time. But again, I mean, since they have each other, are they really unhappy? I mean, I went there, and I was in the lower key thing with them, and there wasn't any of the birds that looked unhappy. They didn't look sick. But again, birds hide these things. So again, like, unless you're in the mind of a bird, do we really know if they're happy or not? I'm gonna look into this a little bit more with the CAZA thing and come up with my overall thoughts and opinions about the situation. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Burbs. Okay, so 
down below. I thought that I would wrap up this video real quick to give you guys my overall thoughts about the situation. And they're right. I honestly have a good feeling about the place. I don't feel like they mistreat animals. I don't feel like the poop situation is completely out of control like a lot of the reviews were saying. Are they perfect? No. Is any zoo, aquarium, or anything perfect? No. We try the best that we can, and we hope that we could put our full trust in experts, but they don't always get it right, even though that they have the title expert. It's up to us to basically come together and say, hey, what you're doing is wrong. Hey, can we fix this? This did bother me. The Lord Key thing, I'm still not completely on board with their whole system. And you guys let me know what you think too. If we're going to say, hey, I don't think what you're doing is right there. Well, we also need to come up with an alternative for them, not just say, well, that's wrong. I don't know if the lorikeets need their own separate aviary, which of course is going to be funding that's involved in all these different things. But that's just a suggestion on my end. I think that the lorikeets should be in their own, like, room, not just a little box in the main aviary, you know? I don't know. That's just my suggestion. You guys chime in and let me know what you think as well. But I do think we need to come up with some alternative plan for that. The next problem I have is peanuts. I am almost certain that I saw peanuts in the main aviary. Correct me if I'm wrong, but peanuts aren't supposed to be given to birds, correct? Last thing I would like to say is the part where the lady told me that they get four to ten inquiries a week from private pet owners. This is exactly what I've been preaching and preaching and preaching to you guys about. If you saw my why not to rescue a bird video, it, um, <laughs> it's peed some people off. Here's the deal. We can't just completely rely on the whole adopt all shop thing. You can get more of my thoughts in that video, but there needs to be something else. You can't just expect a brand new bird owner to just read on the internet for six months and be like, yep, I'm an expert now. That's not how it works. It's the same way with kids. You can research and research and read books and books and books, but there is nothing that can prepare you on what it's like to have a kid, a bird, anything until you actually experience it. The fact that they get that many people asking them to take in their birds a week, that just can't be fixed by shutting down breeders. There needs to be stricter parrot laws, something. We need to go higher up and figure something out, not just put adopt, don't shop on a t-shirt and call it a day. Hold on, there's a seed in my hair. Okay, now back to getting serious. We need to lower those numbers down because this is bad. So overall, on my thoughts on Bird Kingdom, do I like the place, do I not? I really enjoyed my time there. Yes, they are not perfect, but here's the thing. I don't think the birds are mistreated. I don't think that the birds were sick. I do think that they try the best they can with the funds and staff that they have. And I feel like any good zoo, aviary aquarium if they have their heart into it and want the best for these animals it's going to be okay is it going to be perfect no are they going to imitate the wild completely no we need to come together and kindly professionally come up with an alternative plan for them if we see something's wrong don't just whine and complain about it on the review and call them horrible we need to come up with a plan hey i didn't like the lord keep situation so here's just my two cents on ways to work around this, ways to make it better. I enjoyed Bird Kingdom. I thought it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed getting to see all these different birds that I most likely wouldn't have seen currently where I live. Please let me know what you think in the comments below or they match up with what I think or not. I want to hear what you guys think and if this is something that you support, something that you don't support, let me know and also let us all know what you think that could be done to better bird kingdom and make it overall just a better place for the animals thank you guys so much i know this video was super long but i tried to cram as much information as i possibly could and get you guys both sides of the story as much as i could in this one video thank you guys so much for hanging out with me and my birds i hope you enjoyed this kind of video i hope that you learned something i definitely did and i definitely had a lot of fun doing all this a lot of work but it was a lot of fun Thank you guys, and I will see you all in my next video. Bye.